guys, today we're gonna learn the science behind Tannerite, which does something pretty interesting when you shoot it. Tannerite is what's known as a binary explosive, meaning it only becomes an explosive when two separate components are mixed together. When you order Tannerite, you get a container like this, which contains mostly ammonium nitrate, and you mix it with a little pack containing mostly aluminum powder. From there, all you have to do is shoot it with a bullet traveling faster than 2,000 feet per second. The genius of this is that it makes Tannerite legal to use by most people. In the United States, it's not illegal to manufacture explosives, it's just illegal to ship them without the proper permits. But even though it may be legal, Tannerite can still be very dangerous, and some states do have some further restrictions on it, so please do your research and be safe if you ever decide to shoot it. Now the ammonium nitrate used as the main ingredient is produced in massive quantities every year, mainly for use as fertilizer. On its own, it's very stable. You could put a flame to it, hit it with a hammer, shoot it, and nothing would happen. However, it is a very strong oxidizer, which means it desperately wants to accept electrons from any nearby fuel as it breaks apart and forms gases from its oxygen. The rapid rate and temperature these gases form at is what creates an explosion. Ammonium nitrate can become explosive when mixed with just 1% fuel by weight. In fact, that massive explosion that took place in Beirut last year was caused by 2,700 tons of improperly stored ammonium nitrate. So now we know the power of ammonium nitrate, but what's the deal with all that aluminum powder? Well, it turns out the answer to this is really complicated, and researchers don't fully understand how it sensitizes the ammonium nitrate. While I would love to be able to show you the step-by-step -step reaction Tannerite takes as it explodes, explosions are very complex and take place at such extreme temperatures, pressures, and speeds that it's very hard to know and model exactly what's happening. With that being said, there's still a lot of research on aluminum and other substances' effects on ammonium nitrate. Adding aluminum powder in quantities up to 15% by weight have been shown to increase the detonation velocity of the explosion, meaning the explosion happens faster and is generally more powerful. The aluminum also increases the sensitivity, temperature, and brescence of the explosion, and brescence is just a fancy word for the shattering capability of an explosive, which normally comes from a higher pressure. While the reasons for this are not exactly known, something known as oxygen balance has a big effect on it. Oxygen balance is a way to show how well an explosive can be oxidized. In an explosive, you want the reaction to be as complete as possible, meaning all your carbon, hydrogen, and metals are able to bond with oxygen and be oxidized and release energy. Ammonium nitrate on its own has an oxygen balance of positive 20%, meaning it has a 20% surplus of oxygen by weight. Aluminum, on the other hand, has an oxygen balance of negative 89%, meaning it needs 89% of its mass in oxygen in order to be oxidized. Ideally, you would want your explosive to have an oxygen balance of 0%, where you'd have the exact amount of oxygen needed and nothing left over. And as a general rule of thumb, the closer the oxygen balance is to zero, the higher the sensitivity, brescence, and velocity is. There's actually a formula you can use to calculate oxygen balance using the molecular weight of the compound and how many carbon, hydrogen, metal, and oxygen atoms it contains. If we take the exact formula for tannerite, where the oxidizer and fuel are mixed in an 8 to 1 ratio, and ammonium perchlorate, titanium sponge, and zirconium hydride are also mixed in in smaller amounts, we can calculate the average molecular weight of the tannerite mixture along with the mole fractions for each substance. And the mole fraction tells us what percentage of the mixture will be a particular substance or compound. After plugging in all the values, we see tannerite has an oxygen balance of around positive 9%, which works as a perfect balance. 
Tannerite is a lot more powerful and sensitive than plain ammonium nitrate, but it's not too sensitive or explosive. Even in its mixed form, it cannot be set off by fire or friction. This makes tannerite a secondary explosive, meaning it needs another explosion in order to set it off. While C4, another secondary explosive, can only be detonated by the shockwave from a blasting cap, tannerite is detonated by the shockwave from a bullet. As a bullet moves through the air faster than the speed of sound, the shockwave moves outwards from its path. As the shockwave moves through the tannerite, the high pressure and temperature gives the chemical reaction enough energy to start. From this, the chemical reaction then moves outwards behind the shockwave as hot gases are created and expelled at super high pressures and speeds. The speed it moves at is known as its detonation velocity, which in this case is around 20,000 feet per second. This is enough to instantly pulverize the plastic container as a new, bigger shockwave is created, leaving a little crater in the ground and a very happy shooter. Now, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating this video and blowing stuff up, then please leave a like or subscribe. And I really want to give a special thanks to all my patrons and subscribers for sticking with me, even though I haven't been very active recently. Thanks.